Hello there and welcome again to another video. Uh, my name is Len Bransowitz. I am a board certified clinical nutritionist, co-host of the Ask the Pharmacist radio show, syndicated on XM and Sirius Radio. Uh, you can find out more about our show by going to our website, lenandjoe.com. We've done a series of these videos. You can find them on our website, dealing with everything from thyroid to how to eat properly. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. As the obesity epidemic has gotten worse and worse in this country, we have seen numerous diet plans pop up. We're working on one, a scientific weight loss plan ourselves. And we have that in the testing mode right now. But when we're in the mode of counting calories, what do you do? How many calories a day? What's a good number? And I wish there was a way to do that. We scientifically check for that using what's called a BIA analysis unit. But if you don't have that, what do I do? What I want to talk to you today about is how could I legitimately and simplistically cut 500 calories out of every meal? Extreme, you say? Yeah, it could be. But with the average American consuming somewhere between three and 5,000 calories a day, needing a minimum of around 1,700 a day just to keep our brain functionality, how could I do that? So I'm going to give you some simple tips. We're going to look at breakfast, we're going to look at lunch, we're going to look at supper. Just some simple ideas, some things maybe you haven't thought about that can help you trade, swap, and try to make some changes in your diet. Let's look at breakfast. How about this? The typical American breakfast is a bagel and a glass of coffee or a cup of coffee. How about this? Do you know that if you swapped your bagel for an English muffin? Doesn't sound too bad. Go for the Thomas's English muffin instead of the bagel. Do you know that's 220 calories of savings? 220 right there. And how about if you're going to have a glass of milk? I'm not a big fan of drinking dairy, but if you went from whole milk to skim, that's another 70 calories. Now we're up to 290. And what happens if we had an omelet for breakfast this morning? Instead of having that standard three egg omelet, we had one egg and two egg whites. Do you know that's another 125 calories? And you know if you switched from pork sausage to turkey sausage, that's another 125. So what do we have for breakfast? Glass of skim milk, 8 ounces. We had a 3 egg omelet using 1 egg and 2 egg whites. We had some turkey sausage and we had an English muffin. Compared to the other breakfast, that's over 700 calories down. One meal little comment here that came from Susan Kleiner. She's a registered dietitian, co-author of a book called Good Mood Diet. Said it's so easy to eat a whole cup of cereal rather than a half cup serving. So again, if you're going to have cereal as one of these meals, look at portions. You can easily save at least five to 600 calories with breakfast alone. And remember, mom told us breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Listen to this. Keep in mind a cup of granola. Oh, granola is healthy, right? A cup of granola for breakfast, 600 calories. But that typical bowl of a high fiber cereal, about 120. That's another four or 500 calories right there. All right, let's move to lunch. What am I going to do for lunch? Well, let's look at the lunch. How about this? If we started out, something as simple as I have an hour for lunch, I'm going to do a brisk 15 minute walk. Do you realize 15 minutes, what I typically do, take my watch, I'm going to walk briskly seven and a half minutes out, seven and a half minutes back. Do you know that burns at least 150 calories? And I know it gives you less time to eat, but you're going to be able to do things wisely. So let's look at, we go to the restaurant, we place an order. What are we going to do? If you used hummus or mustard, follow me, instead of mayonnaise, on a roll for sliced bread for your sandwich, you can cut out 200 calories just by doing that. Now, if you made a transition, you know, your meal you ordered came with fries or a potato, and instead of that I substitute a salad, that's 350 calories in savings. I know this sounds almost common sense, but if a brisk walk, a little change instead of mayo, we just use mustard or hummus, and a roll instead of sliced bread. I know you're going to see that you know, whole grain roll. The savings there on that little switch was almost 650 calories. Now, let me show you some other little points from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition says, if I can slow down 
and get more chewing involved, if I can chew my food, as mom said, a little more effectively, do you know that if you can chew your food, I know it's difficult to do, 20 times, you can cut almost 70 calories out of your meal. So, some simple things, rather than shoveling that food in, is take your time, take a little brisk walk ahead of time, make some common sense changes as far as what you're putting on that sandwich. I didn't even talk about what's on the sandwich. You can save at least 500 calories. Now, between breakfast and lunch now, we've saved over 1,000 calories. So now, we move to supper time. Let's say you're going to be eating at home. Or let's say you're going to a buffet. Or you're at a restaurant. Do you know rather than depriving yourself of food to drop weight, how about this? You simply use a smaller plate. I know you're going to say this, is, this sounds so common. Listen to this. People eat as much that is on their dish rather than the amount their body actually needs, says Jacob Teitelbaum, who wrote a book called Beet Sugar Addiction Now. If you can shrink the size of your dish by a quarter, such as going from a 12-inch plate to a 9-inch plate, do you know that simple fact? They did this in restaurants. They followed people at home. That that alone typically could cut 500 calories without even feeling deprived. Research backs it up. People serving themselves cream and ice cream in larger bowls ate 31% more. <coughs> Scientifically proven, if you eat with smaller plates, you will save substantially more calories. What about seconds? Once you've died, downsized to these smaller plates, give yourself permission to eat as much as you want, but wait 20 to 30 minutes. Take a little breather. Smaller plate, <clears throat> eat the meal, have seconds if you're still a little bit deprived. You never go back to seconds, typically. That's what's found if you wait 20 to 30 minutes. <clears throat> How about if we take a look at the side dishes that you're having with your lunch or your supper? Instead of dipping chips in fat-packed sour cream, how about if you got the baked tortilla chips or a whole wheat pita, a little low-fat refried beans or chunky salsa? That alone can save 318 calories. Or a side of the traditional potato salad or sliced tomatoes, cucumbers, and onions with a little fat-free dressing. That can save you 258 calories. So in essence, downsizing the size of the plate from a 12-inch to a 9-inch. Try it. It works. Notice we didn't talk about what you're eating. Look at your side dishes. Try to make some common sense choices there. If you're still hungry, wait 20 minutes before you go off for seconds. Most times you'll find out you don't. And instead of dipping chips and having potato chips or fries, try some of those baked tortilla chips or a whole wheat pita wedge. And try a side of refried beans or some chunky salsa. You'll find that right there you've cut at least 580 calories out of your supper. So what do we have? 580 at supper time with that simple change, 550 at lunch time, and 650 at supper. We add that up and we've got 18, 6, 12, 1880 calories we saved in the typical day without really struggling, without making it a difficult thing to do. You can do it and it's not difficult. Some simple ways to cut 500 calories out of your situation and being able to burn fat and be healthier every day. Simple idea. If you need more information like that, feel free. We have a toll-free number set up at 877-275-7743, 877-275-7743, and the website lenandjoe.com. Thanks for listening.